Good morning, and welcome to Quinsigamon Community College. My name is Keith Hurst. I'm the current program director and coordinator for the Quinsigamon Community College Respiratory Care Program. I'd like to call this pinning ceremony to order. Pinning ceremonies have a long history. The history of nursing pins date back to the Crusades in the 12th century. Monks initiated to the Knights Hospiteer that cared for injured and ill. Crusaders were given a Maltese cross, which was the first form of a badge given for nursing. After the Crimean War, Queen Victoria awarded Florence Nightingale the Royal Red Cross for her service as a military nurse during the conflict. Nurse Nightingale later pre um, presented a somewhat similar Medal of Excellence to her outstanding nursing students. Over the years, other healthcare <coughs> professions started to model nursing pinning ceremonies to recognize their students and graduates. A pinning ceremony is a symbolic welcoming of a new graduate or soon to be graduate healthcare professional into the healthcare profession. It sometimes recognizes the completion of educational requirements that enables healthcare students to take their licensing examinations. The ceremony is not a graduation as it does not signify the completion of all the criteria necessary to earn a healthcare degree. I've had the distinct pleasure to be this class's program director coordinator for the past nine months. Karen Dufault, who retired in May of 2020, recruited these students and instructed them over their first two semesters before I became program director. Karen has undoubtedly left her mark on this program and on this group of students. To say that these students have had some challenges would be an understatement. I doubt that when they entered this program, they would have imagined going away on a spring break their first year, only to come back to have their classes held virtually. They could not have anticipated that their program director would retire, learning via Zoom, and spending more hours than they ever imagined on camera and attending classes via computer. Not only did the students need to be flexible, but as professors, we had to change how we taught as well. In some cases, they literally did not know their clinical rotations until the week of, and then still it changed mid-semester because of the ongoing pandemic. And not to mention all the other things that happen in what we call life. Yet this class persevered and made it to this moment. This is really a celebration about and for you. While the pandemic has caused us to curtail this event to our closest friends and family and to a few select faculty, we are at least in person and not doing this virtually. And so that, we thank you, Dean Schmoll and Dr. James Keene for making and allowing this and the other pairing ceremonies to happen today. <clears throat> As I said, today is all about the students. And I'd like to introduce the class of 2021. As I call your names, please rise and remain standing until all the names have been called. Crystal Jacqueline Dalsonniers. Morgan Heidi Lindsay. Tanya Marie Morrell. And Michaela Rose Roulard. Thank you. You may be seated. I would now like to call upon Dr. James Keene, Vice President of Academic Affairs, to offer his remarks on behalf of the QCC faculty and staff. Dr. Keene. Good morning and welcome. On behalf of our president, the faculty, the staff, and administration at Quinsigamon Community College, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome you to this great event this morning. And let me begin by saying how proud we are of the accomplishments that we celebrate today and all that you've been through and obstacles you surpassed to be successful. My comments today are really two thoughts and one last assignment that I will ask you to complete. First for the two thoughts. First, I'd like to begin today by thanking you for accepting your vocation. That any field in healthcare, specifically the one that you're entering, is not about a job, it's not about prestige, it's not about title, but it's truly about fulfilling your vocation that you've been called to do and the reduction and the adding of hope and compassion. One of my favorite authors is Thomas Burton. And when he speaks about one's vocation in life, he says, discovering vocation does not mean scrambling towards some prize just beyond reach, but accepting the treasure of true self 
one already possesses. Vocation does not come from a voice outside calling me but some, to something that I'm not, but rather something that I am. It comes from a voice inside calling me to be the person I'm able to be, to fulfill the original selfhood given to me at birth. Today you choose this vocation, you're called to this vocation that really brings you forward to bring compassion, to bring hope, to bring healing. Which leads me to my second point. First, to thank you for your vocation, and second, to how you view this pinning today. We hope you view this pinning as truly being a license to serve. A license to serve our community, the license to serve humanity, and a license to bring healing and hope and compassion. When I was in graduate school, I was studying theology and I was studying pastoral counseling. And each year in our graduate program, we were sent out to a clinical site for spend a year in an internship type experience. And some of the placements were very exciting that you were given, you were assigned these, you didn't choose these. So some of my classmates got on planes to third world countries. Others were working in imprisoned or in um, inner city areas. And the one that I was selected to perform was to work a year in a hospital as a chaplain intern. And my classmates sort of chuckled and the upper class students kind of said, oh, you pulled the short straw on this one, Jimmy, you're gonna get sent to a hospital. I said, it sounds exciting, why would that be the short straw? They said, well, in pastoral counseling, honestly, the doctors and nurses are doing their thing and you're gonna spend more time in the coffee shop because friends and family are visiting the patients and the time that you have alone with them is very, very minimal. So off I headed to the hospitals, my first time working in a healthcare type agency. And there are two lessons that I learned and learned very quickly. The first lesson is it's true. Many people are blessed during a hospital stay to have friends and family come visit. But when the friends and family go home, the patient is filled with fear. Fear in regards to the procedure that they're there to receive. Fear in regard to the illness that they've been diagnosed with. Fear about the unknown of what this means to their life, to their next steps, to their journey, to their loved ones. That the patients, after the quietness sets in, that always does in a hospital setting, whether it's three in the morning or when visiting hours end, fear sets in. And the second thing that I learned in the hospital and what I learned from my program and in pastoral counseling didn't come from other chaplains in the hospital, nor did it come from the doctors. But what I learned about compassion and hope and a journey with one along their path, even when it's a road of illness, is that it was the technicians and the nurses and those who supported the healthcare um, healing were the ones that really brought hope. They were the ones who stood next to the bed holding a hand and maybe five times explaining the procedure, five times explaining what the doctor had said, or five times explaining what the journey ahead might look like. They're the ones that work with the families and tried to make it more of a humane experience. They're the ones who had the patient fully be able to, to remove some of that fear through the unknown and become more comfortable in regards to the steps that might be there. They brought healing, they brought hope, they brought compassion, they brought love, they brought understanding, and they made the brick and mortar, that hospital setting, a much more compassionate place, which is what I was studying in through, through pastoral counseling. So today, what I say when, when I regard what you're receiving today is really more than a penning, but a license to serve. It's to bring that hope, to bring that love, to bring that compassion, in addition to all of the academic skills that you've learned in regard to the health care that you'll be providing. But in addition to all that learning and skills that you've learned and that you'll, you'll use with the patients that you treat, it's far much more of the steps in the journey that you take with patients going forward. So I thank you for your vocation. And I challenge you to see this as a license. My last comment, and I'll close with this, is a last assignment. As Vice President of Academic Affairs, I'm allowed to give you your last homework assignment, and it's this. Today, you're going to celebrate when the ceremony is over. You'll go out for lunches or visit with family or gather together as safely as you can. But before you go to bed this evening, before you click off your phone for the last time of the day, I encourage you and urge you to write an email of thanks to somebody who supported you through this process. Those, those folks who served as your mentors throughout the program, whether it's a K through 12 teacher that inspired you to go on for higher education, whether it's somebody in the field that helped you learn about this amazing profession that you're about to embark on, a clinical professor, one of our own professors of the program who've worked with you, who did an amazing job in a two week period of flipping our curriculum 
to ensure that the standards of academics were still met during COVID, but at the same time, we were able to help you continue along your journey and not stop out completely. Whether it's Dean Schmall, who has wrestled with administration every step of the way, including to make sure this ceremony happened in person today, or a friend or a family or a parent who missed you during celebrations because you had a study or work, a classmate that supported you when things got rough, and everybody that took a step with you along that journey. Tonight, before you go to bed, my friends, your last assignment is to send a thank you. Let that person know what they've meant along your journey, how they've helped you reach this level of success and accomplishment today, because as we know, it takes a whole village to make that happen. So again, on behalf of QCC, you will always be part of our family. We're so extremely proud of you, and congratulations on this great accomplishment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Keene. I would now like to call upon Dean Pat Schmoll to offer his remarks on behalf of the School of Healthcare faculty and the staff. Dean Schmoll. Uh, thank you, Keith. Uh, thank you, Dr. Keene. This is gonna be a tough act to follow. So um, I'll keep, uh, I just have a few things to say. So I can remember back uh, to, um, I was in Amy's classroom and I got to observe her in the lab and you guys were all holding the nebulizer treatment back in fall of 19. And the biggest thing we worried about was what parking downtown, right? It was, life was so good back then. Um, you guys did such a great job. And think back to where you were two years ago. That was, I remember like thinking like, oh my word, you guys are gonna be seeing how that little piece of equipment changes lives. So Dr. Keene was talking about you know, being beside a, a patient and, and um, you know, the people helping him through the healing process and, and giving him hope. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen how the person is looking at you when you're walking in the room and they can't breathe, and they're looking at you like, please, can you help me? Can you do something? And you guys save them, and you like change that fear into like hope. And so with Dr. Keene, I know you guys have, have seen that. So a couple things. We were talking about um, like changes on the hour. Amy, uh, Professor Hogan working with the clinical groups, when it was, she would send me an email, hey, they're doing this to us. Oh, wait a minute, I'd, I'd finished reading that and then she'd be sending another one. The, the responsiveness of her to work with your clinical faculty to make changes and then for you guys to be constantly understanding in, in, in making the changes, that is how I know you guys are gonna be unbelievable in this field. Because in my you know, 30 years of working in healthcare, I used to, every day is different. So you guys really showed me how you were able to adapt and make changes and, and, and be you know, where you are today. So it is truly incredible and I know that you guys are gonna be so successful. So the, the clinical work, Amy, I just wanted to thank you because really the amount of effort that it took to get you guys here, because People were saying like, you know, we we're trying to get people back in the classrooms and, and I'm biting my tongue because I'm like, I've got students that are standing, you know, two feet away from someone with COVID treating them that we don't know they have COVID, but they can't breathe. And then and we, we're back here talking about, you know, how to, you know, set up a, a lab or a classroom. So you guys were incredible. Also then for Karen, Professor Dufault, who retired, to get you to have your, your student internship hours to count as clinical, that was unheard of. Because as coming from the paramedic background, we used to try to get our paramedic students who were working at a fire department or an ambulance to count their time towards their paramedic time. And, and you know, for 20 years we tried to do that and we, we weren't successful. So for Karen to get you guys to count that as clinical time, really, that was truly incredible. And then Professor Hurst starting in the middle of this, he didn't get to see his, his uh, office probably till, what, November? Um, which is just, yeah, un unheard of. So ev everyone, you know, we, 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 the challenges. The clinical faculty, you worked, and then the, the family. I do, it, it is so trying that you can only bring, you know, a few people in here um, because I know there was a lot more that supported you through your journey. But again, to see you in person, I know you guys worked in clinical groups, so you get to see each other and it's a small program, but to, to actually get to see you, because I was looking, I'm like, are you, that's you, Tony? You know, it's so nice to see you guys in person. So to see this being here is wonderful. And all that you've done is just truly incredible. So moving forward, I truly hope that you guys keep working. 
right? We, we need respiratory therapists to keep moving, keep, keep going in the education, because we're going to need to be replacing clinical faculty members and our faculty members sitting up front. And you guys showed me that any one of you can do it because you just navigated a great two years. So thank you for all you've done. Congratulations, I am truly proud of, of you, and I'm thankful for the faculty, the clinical faculty, and everyone getting to where you are. So thank you so much, and great job. Thank you, Dean Small. And lastly, I'd like to call upon Morgan Lindsay and Crystal Desauniers to offer their remarks on behalf of the 21 2021 graduating class. Morgan and Crystal. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the graduating class of 2021, I would like to thank you all for attending the respiratory care pinning ceremony. Today, our class is surrounded by our dedicated faculty, loving families, and special friends who all made this journey possible for each of us. Well, guys, we made it. <laughs> I feel like it was just yesterday when we were at our first day of lab and Amy was teaching us how to assess vital signs on each other. I thought it was pretty simple. Breathe in, breathe out. What else is there to know? Little did we know that respiratory therapy was going to involve much more than that, like IPPB. Before joining this program, I didn't know much about respiratory other than cystic fibrosis and the occasional cough or cold. However, after spending many hours on disease management protocols, I think I'm a little more educated on other respiratory conditions that exist in the world. When the four of us first met each other, I knew that we would become close from the very beginning. Michaela, Crystal, and Tanya, I feel so lucky and so blessed to have you all in my life. It's hard for me to call you my classmates when I truly feel that you guys are my family. We laughed together, we cried, <clears throat> and then we cried harder. Or maybe that was just me. I don't know. <laughs> Although some days we felt like we couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, we got through this program together, and our pinning day is finally here. The past two years have not been easy for any one of us, and we faced many challenges that ultimately made us stronger. We studied respiratory care through a horrifying pandemic that has turned our lives upside down. Everything that we thought we would face in this program had to be rearranged and tackled in a new way that has never been done before. Online learning was not easy, but getting out of bed five minutes before class started, that was easy, sometimes. <laughs> um, even though we all would have preferred to be in person for our classes. I don't think I would be at the pinning today if that were the case. Online learning allowed me to rest on days that my body was trying to fight me. I could stay in my pajamas and still present a protocol to the class. But more importantly, I could lay still and keep my heart from wanting to explode. So with that being said, this is the first and last time I will say thank you to online learning, literally. To Dean Schmoll, thank you for being a crucial part of our I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for being a crucial support for our program director and clinical director as they scrambled to make last minute accommodations for on site learning, whether it be at lab or clinical sites during the constant turbulence brought on by the COVID 19 pandemic. I also want to thank Keith for continuing to build on the foundation of knowledge that we built in our freshman year. I'm sure it was challenging having a class filled with four strong-willed and determined women. I hope we didn't drive you too crazy as we increasingly struggled with senioritis as the months went on. I hope you never forget your first graduating class here at QCC and that you'll always remember Tanya's Dr. Seuss rhyme for years to come. I, I want to thank Amy, our amazing clinical director, for jumping through hoops to get us through this program. Your hard work, dedication, and compassion should never go unnoticed. And I'm so thankful for all the knowledge you've, <clears throat> excuse me, you filled us with over these past two years. I want to recognize all of our outstanding clinical instructors, but I would like to give a special thanks to Kim and Karen you were with us for so many of our first big steps. We each did our first arterial blood gas with you, our first extubation, participated in our first code, 
as well as many other first experiences that are too numerous to mention. You two are inspiring, and thank you for all of the makeup days you did with me. I hope you'll never have to do that many with any other student ever again. <laughs> but you both kept me motivated when I was feeling frustrated. You kept me sane when I felt like the world was falling apart. <laughs> and you were always there for me whenever I needed either of you. Lastly, to my mom. It has been a wild two years with me being in this program. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you for putting up for me when I putting up with me when I had loads of studying to do and when I needed you to take Buddy away as I was in the middle of exams when he was trying to play. <laughs> Thank you for giving me my space when I needed it, but also being right next to me when I needed you. You and I have been through a lot this past year. I know you always worry about me, my health, and what my future may hold. I promise to always communicate with you and do my best to make you proud. I love you, Mom. Class of 2021, I can't wait to see all of you shine in the respiratory therapy world. You should be proud of yourselves, and I know you will all provide excellent patient care in your careers. Thank you. So breathe in, <laughs> breathe out. Sounds easy, right? That is what we all thought when we walked into class on our first day of the program. Boy, were we wrong. It was then that we realized we had a long, hard road ahead of us, but we made it through. We made it through a respiratory therapy program in the midst of a respiratory pandemic. The journey was not easy. We laughed, we cried, we did not sleep, but we picked each other up and calmed each other down when needed. When one of us were a nervous wreck over an upcoming exam, we would always say, you know more than you think you know. And we always did. Tanya Morell, what is the alveolar air equation? This program has taught us how to treat and manage patients with cardiopulmonary disorders. But it also taught us how to have empathy and compassion for these patients, because after all, these patients are still people. <coughs> we have also learned that albuterol does not cure all, although some doctors would disagree. I just want to say congratulations to all of us. Thank you to Amy, to Keith, to all the clinical directors clinical instructors for helping us become the respiratory therapists that we knew we could become. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan and Crystal. At this point, I would like to acknowledge some of the outstanding contributions that our students have made over their academic career at QCC. The first award is the Outstanding Departmental Award. The recipient of this award is selected by the program faculty and goes to a student that stands out amongst the other students in the class. This particular student had what I call more than her fair share of challenges despite everything and still rose above it all. The student I have to say from the moment I met her advocated for her peers. She was her voice but at the same point eager to learn and to become a better respiratory student. She was a bridge between the first years and the second year students, always willing to help out when a student had questions due to her clinical knowledge and understanding of the material. Clinically, she continued to show a high degree of empathy when taking care of patients. This is probably through her own medical issues as well as a close friend who has CF. Through all of this, she dealt with a series of medical issues and at times she would zoom into class from either from home while she was resting or to the hospital while she was waiting for tests as to minimize missing any class time. She, always represent, she also represented her classmates on the advisory board. This student had a good mix of leadership, intelligence, and his outstanding clinician to boot. As program director, representing the program and clinical faculty, it gives me great pleasure to award the Outstanding Department Award to Morgan Lindsay.
Next, I'd like to call upon Amy Hogan, who is the Director of Clinical Education for the next award. The award for outstanding clinical excellence is selected by the clinical faculty. I'd like to share with you some of the remarks that have been made about this year's outstanding clinical excellence recipient. She always strives to put forth her best effort, pushing herself to excel in all that she does. One instructor stated, and I quote, what I love most about her is her ability to carry out a skill, new or already proficient, with confidence in front of the patient. That is exactly what our patients need to feel cared for and safe. She is intelligent, compassionate, and hardworking. Her excitement and passion for respiratory care is evident. She's always happy to be at clinical and excited to learn. Another instructor states, and I quote, I always felt she was taking in all that she could from her time with me. This year's Outstanding Clinical Excellence recipient is, a student, is an excellent student and clinician. She is a perfect combination of confidence and caution balancing critical thought and inquiry with independent skill and performance. Her passion for learning and caring is evident in the way she handles herself with patients, instructors, and her classmates. As the Program Director of Clinical Education, representing the clinical and program faculty, it is my pleasure to present the Outstanding Clinical Excellence Award to Crystal DeSaniers. The respiratory care program is not an easy program by any stretch of the imagination. Not only students learning about the cardiopulmonary system and everything that can go wrong, but also how to treat it. From a patient's first breath to their last, students enrolled in the QCC respiratory care program have to learn it and at a very fast and intense pace. The Academic Achievement Award is given to those students who have achieved a GPA of 3.6 or higher throughout their academic career. These students, students are to be commended for their maintain of a high academic standard during their academic career. On behalf of the program and clinical faculty, we would like to award the following students with their Academic Achievement Award. And as I call your name, please come up. Crystal DeSaliers, Morgan Lindsay, and Tanya Morrill. The next two awards were already handed out early at our ceremony, and the recipients have already received their certificates. However, we want to take a moment to recognize the following individuals. Both the Distinguished Service Award and Special Recognition Award were nominated by the program faculty for these awards. The Distinguished Service Award. The recipient of the Distinguished Service Award is chosen by the club advisor, of which uh, that's the Respiratory Care Club. This student is chosen for his or her outstanding leadership in the club activities, and only one student per club will receive this award. The QCC Distinguished Service Award went to Crystal DeSaliers. The QCC Special Recognition Award. The Special Recognition Award is recognizes those students whose contributions have occurred outside the framework of student organizations and whose individual efforts otherwise would go unnoticed. These students have volunteered their time on special projects, served as student representatives on <coughs> governance committees, excelled in their work study positions, or made significant contributions to a department in the college. The QCC Special Recognition Award went to Morgan Lindsay. <laughs> the 
Next is induction to the Lambda Beta. The Lambda Beta Society is the National Honor Society for the Profession of Respiratory Care. The National Honor Society for, um, sorry, <coughs> Uh, the National Honor Society for the Profession of Respiratory Care was formed in 1986 to promote, recognize, and honor scholarship, scholarly achievement, service, character of students, graduates, and faculty members of this profession. The name of the society is based on the goals of the respiratory care profession, sustaining life and breath for all mankind. Lambda, A, is the Greek letter L, and beta, <coughs> B, is the Greek letter B. Nominees must be in the top 25% of the class in order to be selected. So in a class of four, that's a little hard to do. The department pays for the admission fee and inductees receive a pin and an honor cord to wear at the graduation pinning ceremonies. This year, our inductee is Tanya Morell. Please join me in congratulating Tanya. Now what the students have been waiting for, the pinning. Traditionally, those receiving the pins often dedicate their pins to a person who has made a significant impact on their lives. The ceremony itself, a faculty member from the healthcare program typically hands the pin to each designated significant person who in turn places it on the student uh, who selected them. Sometimes the faculty member themselves place the pins on the student. These pins that you're to receive today were designed several years ago and been a long-standing tradition within the department. Each pin is sterling silver with the seal of the college. On the back are the initials of the student along with the year of graduation. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, I'd like, as we call up each student, uh, Amy and I will place the pin around your uh, neck and please um, wait until pictures have been taken. Well, unfortunately, <clears throat> um, Sorry. This pin for, will forever identify you as a respiratory graduate from Kunsingaman College, and we know you will wear it proudly. So as I please call your name, please come forward. Crystal DeSaliers. Morgan Lindsay. Tanya Morrell. <laughs> and Michaela Roulard. Congratulations, and we wish you the best in your respiratory career. You may be seated. Next, I'd like to call up Dean Paschmo, who leads in the oath of Menominees. Uh, before I invite him back in, um, you know, when I came into this uh, program and I knew that this ceremony was going to have to be done at some point, I wanted to put my own uh, twist on it um, and start a new tradition. And uh, I've seen a lot of <clears throat> um, uh, pinning ceremonies or graduations around healthcare, and, and a lot of them, they do this oath of uh, menominees. And what it is, it was actually written back in the early 1800s by a Jewish, Jewish physician. There's actually an oath and a prayer that go along with it. Um, <clears throat> and this has been modified um, to go for all healthcare. And so um, it really is meant to uphold or reaffirm 
um, why we get into healthcare and to give us guidance as we go forward. So at this point, uh, I would like to invite Dean Schmoll to come up and lead us all in the oath. Dean Schmoll. Thank you, Professor Hurst. So to uh, welcome our new graduates to the community healthcare professions and for all of us in the healthcare profession, uh, to the profound nature and the privileges and responsibilities to recite the oath of me and my minds. I ask everyone who is in health care, not just the students, to please uh, stand and uh, recite the uh, oath of me and my minds with our new graduates. So if everyone can stand. And the oath, and the oath is printed on the back of your program. Okay, ready? Right, so. Almighty God, you, you have created with infinite, 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 infinite wisdom. wisdom. You have you chosen me to watch over the life and health of your creatures. I am now about to apply myself to the duty of my profession. Support me in the great labors and may be benefit humankind. Inspire me with love, my art, and your creator. Do not allow me to thirst for profit, ambition, renown, and admiration to interfere with my profession, for these are the enemies of truth can lead me astray. Preserve the strength of my body, soul, to ever ready, help, support, the rich, the poor, the enemy, or my friend. In the sufferer, I must see only human being, enlighten my mind, that recognizes what presents itself, and you may comprehend, absent, or hidden. Let it not fail to see what is visible, but do not permit it to irrigate its, its power to see what cannot be seen. For delicate and indefinite are the bounds of the great art of caring for the lives of the health of thy creatures. Let me never be absent-minded. May no strange thoughts divert my attention at the bedside of the sick or disturb my mind in the silent labors. Grant that my patients have the confidence of me and my art should those who are wiser than I wish to improve and instruct me, let my soul gratefully follow their guidance, for vast is the extent of our art. Imbue the soul with gentleness and calmness, let me be contented in everything except this great science of my profession. Never allow the thought to arise in me, and I've attained to sufficient knowledge, but I've not safe for the strength, the leisure, and ambition ever to extend my knowledge. For our art is great, but the mind of humankind is ever expanding. Mighty God, thou hast chosen me in thy mercy to watch over life and death of your creatures. Support me in this great task and benefit humankind. For without your help, not even the world can succeed. I am ready for my vocation and now apply myself to my profession. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Schmuel. Before you all leave today, I'd like to have say a few words. Like, you really think I could get leave without me saying the last word? Never before has the world needed healthcare like it has now. Never before has the world needed respiratory therapists like it has now. Never before has healthcare needed respiratory therapists like it has now. This pandemic has not only shown how fragile our healthcare system is, but how critical certain members of our healthcare system really are, such as respiratory therapists. You're entering a workforce that now more than ever are calling on your skills to help people breathe and deal with the after effects of this pandemic. You're entering a workforce that is calling on you to be resourceful, knowledgeable, to be in the leading edge of medicine while being as evidence-based as possible. As many of you know, I have a love for boating, particularly sailing. So when a storm arises, a determined crew works diligently to keep their storm-tossed ship on course. 
This pandemic has been like that storm and respiratory therapists have been an integral part of that crew that have kept patients alive and breathing through their knowledge of how the cardiopulmonary system works. It was RTs that led the way for pouring patients which can show to improve patient outcomes. It was RTs that showed that the use of high flow nasal cannula and non-invasive can prevent patients from being intubated and again, improving outcomes for patients that have COVID. And finally, it was RTs that managed these patients and helped them live to see their loved ones. As Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, greatness is not where we stand, but in what direction we are moving. We must sail sometimes with the wind and sometimes against it, but sail we must and not drift or lie at anchor. As you leave the confines of QCC in this program, you enter a world and healthcare system which needs you now more than ever. Remember your training. But always strive to learn more. You need to raise your sails and show the world why respiratory therapists are and will continue to be a critical part of the healthcare system. Do not be compliant to just being a respiratory therapist. Push your own boundaries. RTs have always adapted to the changing healthcare environment. In some ways, we are like sailors. For sailors cannot change the direction of the wind, but we can adjust our sails. You'll be forced to change your sails, but we have given you the tools and the knowledge to do so. Continue to learn so that you will always be able to adjust and trim your sails no matter what direction the wind may blow. In closing, on behalf of the program and clinical faculty, the QCC School of Healthcare and Quinsigam Community College, we wish you all the best in your respiratory career and I wish you fair winds and following seas. As my seven, month, my seven year old son said to me last night when I asked, told him I had to come in, he said, Dad, haven't you put your students through enough torture as it is? Do they have to see you one last time? <clears throat> and I kind of said, yeah, I, they do. <laughs> However, that being said, at this point, seeing there's no further items, I wish to close this 2021 pinning ceremony for the Quinsingham Community College program. And I wish you all the best in your career. Thank you for coming. <laughs>